darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt
Well, the earth began to shake And the veil was torn What sacrifice was made As the heavens
his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord sent his face toward you and give you peace.
Morning family, so good to be with you this Sunday morning. We have got a word for we you. We do, absolutely. Just <laughs> such a great word for you. So get ready, prepare your hearts. I'm sure, sure you already have in just the incredible worship that we've had together this morning. But get ready because God has got a word for your heart, for your spirit, man, that is going to um, transform your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep loving each other, keep giving, keep being a blessing, keep being Jesus, yeah. keep being the hands and feet of Jesus to your neighbours, your work colleagues, your community, your church family, anyone that you have a chance to love on, love on them, yeah, <laughs> anyone you have a chance to encourage, encourage anyone you can be a blessing to yeah. be a blessing in Jesus name let's continue to just shine brightly in this season Absolutely. and show people that there is a greater way with Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's do this. So what we want to do today and we want to continue to unpack is that thought that we've been, I guess, wrestling with and playing with over the last couple of weeks that Jesus calls us to be like a child, to be childlike. And yet Paul tells us to put off childish things so that there are attributes, characteristics of a child that we need to know and understand. Yeah. Because why is it that our Lord, our Saviour, is telling us to be like that? Mm. And so in the first week, what we discovered was that if you're a child, a child needs help. It needs help from grown-ups. It needs help yeah. from people around them. And so for us to be like a child, we need to be able to accept help, to receive help. But in the same breath, if we are a child, if we're becoming, as Jesus asks us to, to be childlike, if we're becoming like children, then we not only need to receive help, but every time we look at a brother or sister in the Lord, we need to see them as a child of God who needs our love, who needs our compassion, who yeah, needs our right. forgiveness, who needs our help. Great. And putting off childish things means mm. you're not jealous about it. You're not throwing temper tantrums. You're not whinging. You're not whining. You're not gossiping. Because... 
they're childish. That's a childish yeah. behaviour. Yeah. And Paul tells us to put that off. Yeah, mm. and we, you know, two weeks ago we looked at that analogy about the, the mum and dad in hospital who's had a child, the visitors come, they pour all of their attention on the child. Yeah, parents don't get jealous about that. As Christians, we shouldn't get upset because it looks like someone's being loved on more than us because we're actually maturing in our faith. And as we mature in our faith, we know that Father God has got us. Yeah, and right. we know that Father God has got us and he's going to love us and bless us and look after us through the other children of God who see us as children who then continue to love on us. Amen. Yeah, amen. Amen. And then, right. yeah, it's Good stuff. It's, good. it's an awesome revelation of family because everything about God, about Father, about church is community. It's family. Yes. The language yeah. is family. Yeah. And then last week we continued to wrestle with that 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 picture of us being like a child but not childish and to be like a child means we need to be able to receive comfort yes. he's the god of all comfort yeah. and most children most children are comforted totally and receive peace when they're in the arms of their mums and dads aren't Absolutely. they totally Absolutely. at peace they could be they could be just half asleep all just snuggle into these arms and you pass them to someone else and they're good for a second and then they start to cry, you know, mm. um, because that's where they receive comfort. So as children of God, we need to be able to rest and be still in the arms yeah, of God. Really and good. when Paul says, put off childish things, the example we used last week was of, of my own kids when they've run or written a bike, fallen over and they've, you know, cut their leg, you know, part of their leg, grazed it, there's blood and you want to have a look at it, but they're so focused on the pain that they won't let you get close. Yeah. yeah? That's childish. And that's how some of us can be with God. We're in so much pain. We, yeah. We're going through trials and tribulations, mm -hmm. but rather than let God get in and do what God has to do, be the God of all comfort, yeah? yeah, what we act actually childish and we push him away because we're focused on the pain. So that's what mm. we've been looking at. And yeah, so I want to wow, keep great. unpacking that all, of, that, all of that stuff, all of that stuff today. Amen? Amen. Amen. So Papa's ideal, Father God's ideal for us as, as a church is Mount Clear Church of Christ, as a, a family life church is family. Yeah. You know, the language is family. Everything in the gospel really talks about family and parenting and children and, and just all of that. If you really read the gospels, you, you just get that as strongly as anything else that comes through. So that's that's Father's heart. Well, they did life together so beautifully, didn't they? You know, when we go into Acts and we read Acts, we discover this whole community of people doing life as a family, supporting one another, yeah. providing for one another, being there for one another, praying together, journeying together. Like Acts is just such a beautiful picture of family and community and the way that God wants us to actually operate together. Yeah. So read, read some of Acts this <laughs> week, yeah? I say you a challenge, you know, read a chapter of Acts every day this week, you know, or read some verses. Read the Bible. Read the Bible, so read Acts. <laughs> if we could read the Bible as much as we read Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Herald Sun, The Courier, we would probably be men and women of God uh, that walk across water. Yeah, come Just on. Just a thought, who knows? Yeah, That's on. for all of us. Yeah. So here's another thought, another characteristic of a child. Yes, we know that, that, that children need help, but children need others, like yes. they need others. Absolutely. And, and not only for help, like my kids, most kids, yeah, from a really early age, that they want a sibling or they want a friend, they want a play buddy, a play date, you know, someone that they can knock around with, hang out with, run up and down, cause mischief, mischief with, you know, yeah, break the totally. windows underneath the house with, you know. <laughs> well, we've seen that in COVID, haven't we? Because of... Oh, no, it was a long that... time ago the kids broke the windows under the house. I know that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm saying, you know, like we've seen the kids trying to do life without as much connection yeah. because they can't spend time together. And for a lot of our kids, that's been really tough yeah. because their natural desire is to want to do life with their friends, yeah. to want to do life with other people. So this has been a real struggle for them because yeah. they've been separated from that yeah. until recently. Well, but because there's something in that, you know, children learn from others. 
Yeah. That they actually learn from the people they spend time with. Yeah. They learn from those that are, are in and around their sphere of influence, from their parents. Even as they get older, you know, any sport that they play, they've got coaches. They yeah. learn from yeah. those that are positioned and placed in their life. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. they actually learn how to walk properly by watching mum and dad walk. Well, they can walk. Obviously, that's what I can do. You know, yeah. they yeah. learn to talk when they've got other people around that are actually talking with them. Yeah. Not making the baby noises. I know every parent does that. That's great. The child already knows that. You know, <laughs> We're trying to teach them how to speak in the language that's understood. It's the way that they learn with their friends how to use the language while they're speaking to one another. Yeah? yeah, They sometimes learn how to eat You know, by watching the people that are around them. Normally they just might shove food in their face, but they're watching their friend who's using a fork. That could be a novelty, so they use a fork. You know what I mean? <laughs> they, they learn from the people that are around them. That, that's the way a child works. Yeah. And for you and I, if we're going to be a child of God, if we're going to become as Jesus calls us to become, like a child, mm -hmm. then we need to be people that are open to learning from those that are around us. Yeah, great. Yeah? That's really good. I like so, that. I, I, I like this because that really is Jesus' form of discipleship. Yeah, That's how the absolutely. disciples learnt. That's how yeah, the Jewish people really taught, good. by watching those that were positioned and placed in their lives. Yes. So I've started to understand this a little bit more, but John 5.19 reads, So Jesus explained, I tell you the truth, the son can do nothing by himself. Yeah, He does only what he sees the father doing, what he sees the father doing. And whatever the Father does, the Son also does. See, I love this. So you and I are being transformed into the image of Jesus with ever-increasing glory. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, we'll go with that. Now, now, here's a thought and a revelation. Though Father, Son and Holy Spirit all have their own jobs, though we know the Scripture says that not even Jesus knows when he's to return because the Father's not revealed that to him. Mm -hmm. So we know that they can have their own you know, roles and plans and stuff like that. But the revelation is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus is never alone. Yeah, absolutely. He is never alone because mm. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you know, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, all of them are three in one. Yeah. They are always with one another. Yeah. So the first yeah. time that Jesus felt alone was when he was on the earth as a God-man going through and wrestling with the same emotions and things that we do. Yeah. Because when he yeah. was God in heaven, he was never alone. Yeah. And so you That's and I, great. as we become transformed into the image of Jesus, one, we need to realize that we're never alone. God's yeah. always with so us. Good. Come on. But two, part of being a child of God is being in the family of God where we are never alone. Yeah. Again, I'll say, and I said it last week, and I know there are those that are listening and watching that will disagree with me, you cannot be a Christian on your own. Mm. You cannot be a Christian and point your finger and pull down another Christian. That's not how family works. You can have a moment where then you ask for forgiveness, but otherwise you're never alone. God's always with you, but so the children of God are always with you. Yeah, yeah? so good. It's the way family works. Really good. Cool. So let's just keep going for a moment. So Jesus says he can do nothing by himself, only what he sees the Father do doing. So he's copying the Father. Yes. Yeah, he's yeah. never alone. He's copying a Father, and that is the picture of a child to me. You can't leave a child alone. They need help. They learn from those that are around them. Mm -hmm. And in the end, they actually do. You know, you know, sometimes you hear a child say something and you're like, where did you hear that? And then the wife normally or the mother turns and looks to the husband <laughs> like it's all his fault. Yeah, because let's face it, he's dropped the, the big S word or the F-bomb and out it comes. The child just goes, truck, you know, and you think, oh, my goodness. Because they've learnt from those that are around them. That's just the way a child works. Sorry. You know what I like hearing? <laughs> I love when I hear my kids actually use manners with other people um, and be really nice well, to other that, people. That's certainly been learnt from the father. No, that's definitely been learnt from me. 
<laughs> but I love that. I get excited about that. I'm like, oh, thank goodness they've actually learned that. I love hearing them be kind. I love hearing them, you know, just just putting into practice really great things that you've actually taught them. It's like, oh, wow, they got that. Oh, wow, they actually <laughs> listened to that. That went in. Because often... Um, you know, people outside the home get the best of come their behaviour. Come on, So he's never <laughs> alone. He's never alone. Um, he's God and at the same time he's watching and learning from the Father. Amen? Yeah, great. So we, we've come to that place where we're, we're realising now that Jesus is never alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he's never alone. So the Bible actually says, and, and this is what I think he's trying to teach us. He's trying to teach his children a lesson through the life that, that he himself lived. Matthew 18, 20 says, For where two or three gather together as my followers, yeah. I am there among them. He is encouraging us as children of God not to be alone. Yeah, great. Where two or three are gathered, there he is. So be with one another. My kids love being with their friends. We've got to learn. as If we're going to be childlike, we need to learn to love being and spending time with one another. Amen? Absolutely. Well, it doesn't say there, no, you know, where one believer is. In relation to this blessing, it's where two or three gather together. Yeah? And better still, mm -hmm. Mark in chapter 6, verse 7 to 9 reads, Calling the twelve to him, he began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. Mm -hmm. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Two by two. Yeah, he didn't we send need them out each other. He knew, he knew that yeah. children, they need help from others, yes. but they also learn from others. Yeah? yeah. And so when we go out by two by two, we learn the lessons together. Yeah. And I may actually have already known something. And so if Melanie and I are together, she then learns that from me. Yeah. Or we may encounter something and, and walk through it together where we learn that lesson together by watching each other. So I, I, good. I watch how she copes in that situation and I learned that's how we cope. So often when our kids have meltdowns, you know, temper tantrums, it's because they've learned that from us, yeah? It's just, that's the nature of the beast, so to speak. It's the way it works. So let's keep un unpacking this for a moment. So everything about God's plan and purpose is family. It's relationship. Relationship with him and relationship with one another. And we were created, one, to help each other. And also, as children, we need others to see that and to know we should never be left alone. Yeah. If there's, if there's a, a, someone that's part of your church family, wherever you're watching, whatever church you're from, and you know they've not been connected for some time, reach out to them. You should leave yeah. no child alone. Yeah. No child alone. I love that, you know, because sometimes we, we can feel like we're alone or sometimes we can feel like we're doing the journey alone. So I would encourage you, you know, yeah. something that God challenged me with a I don't know, lots and lots of years ago was, you know, be the person to reach out, be the person to contact someone else, be the person to extend a hand of friendship. Don't always be waiting for somebody else to do that with you Come because if, if we want to actually walk how God's created us to walk, then we, then we need to make contact with people and reach out to people and create opportunities yeah, for that to happen. Absolutely. It won't necessarily happen on its own. It actually requires us to make a step yeah. and to take that leap. So years ago, I was like, I refuse to be alone. I refuse to do this journey on my own. I refuse to be lonely. So I am going to love out, reach out, contact people because I want to do the journey the way that God has created me yeah, to. Absolutely. I didn't sit there saying, no one calls me, no one touches base with me, no one reaches out to me. I could have sat there and done that and I would have done the journey alone and that would not be enjoyable at all because it's not how God's created no. it to be. Look, even this week I was totally blessed by a friend who reached out, who was just sharing themselves, you know, uh, sharing honestly that they'd felt like, you know, there, there were so many, they were just going through this isolation and sharing that they'd felt alone, people hadn't reached out to them. And then they actually grabbed hold of themselves and said, what am I doing? You know what? People haven't rung me, but I haven't rung people. So this friend actually rang me that I'd not called, you know, so I, I'm just as guilty on that other side. And we caught up for lunch. You know what? It was such a beautiful time together. 
mm. just to catch up yeah. because somebody decided not to be childish yes but so to be good. childlike and 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 realize that he needs other people around him and then we i was blessed yeah. because he decided to be childlike mm. while i was still being childish because i'd not called anyone does that yeah, make come any on. sense so, so look, we need to learn from each other we need to know that as children we need help and and we need to help each other so that others can then watch us and learn from us yeah absolutely yeah. now paul says in first corinthians 13 he reads when i was it reads when i was a child i talked like a child i thought like a child i reasoned like a child when i became a man i put the ways of childhood behind me now he's not saying don't be childlike he's saying don't be childish mm. so think of it this way he's saying think about what you're going to say and do yeah, think about um, the way that you act. Why? Because there are other children around you. You know, I say this, we say this to Samuel all the time. Samuel, you, you're actually, you're a, you're a strapping, good looking, intelligent, you're, you're good at sport. People look up to you. Think about what you do because others are watching. Yeah, it's yeah? great. Really and we good. have to be like that. Though we're like children that receive help, need help, and learn from those that are around us, we need to realize that those there are others that are watching us, learning from us. So it's in our really maturity, good. we watch how we act and how we speak, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. Just as you were sharing that, I really felt Holy Spirit say that the reason he's speaking to us about this is because he actually wants to lift us up. He actually has a promotion for us. He wants to elevate us. He wants to lift us into greater spaces. Yeah. So he's calling us to put away childish ways and to be childlike so he can elevate you. There's actually an increase coming. There's a promotion coming in the spiritual and that will come as you take the steps of faith that God is speaking in to your life so there is promotion there is increase there is blessing there are miracles and god is positioning us right now and speaking to us right now so that he can bring us into that next space yeah Yeah. see the way that we act the way that we speak it's never ever about us the things that we say it's not about us you know the things that we do it's never about us it's about the children of god that are around us come on that are watching us that are learning from us amen yes so hey put off the childish things be childlike but move in maturity in the same breath because they exist at the same time mm-hmm. he, he's the he's the rebel the revelation and the paradox of christianity you don't move on to maturity and totally leave behind being a child yeah you're actually moving to maturity whilst at the same time still having characteristics of a child that understands that we learn from others a forever learner that understands mm-hmm. that we need help not mm-hmm. too proud to receive help from others Great. yeah Anyway, we're going, to, we're going to keep moving. Matthew 18, 6. But if you cause one of these little ones who trust in me to fall into sin, it would be better for you to have a large millstone tied around your neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. Just, wow. just let's throw some scripture in there. <laughs> What's wrong? You just... Anyway, so one of these little ones, children, it's talking about children of God. It's talking about you and me. We need to watch what we do. We need to be careful of what we say because I have been guilty in the past yeah, of saying something to a young believer who was so offended. And I've, shared, I've actually shared this in our church before that was so offended that walked away. We never saw him in church again. And to this day, I do not know if he actually believes in God anymore. You know, we've got to be careful with what we say because there are people that are really young in their faith that that though we're both childlike might be just newborn infants yeah yeah? yeah. and so they're watching and learning from us yeah so we need to be aware of that you know everything family think family think family think family of god papa loves us so much that he's wired us all to need us all Hmm. that's what he's done he's wired us all to need us all and 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 in that way we're always looking out for one another we're looking for the people that sit beside us behind us around us we're looking for those that we know that belong to other churches that that are struggling you hear things especially now on social media yeah we want to encourage people in the most holy faith yeah because we're all children of god we're all part of his family really good well You know, at the end of the day, it's his church. And we may have our individual home 
homes, our individual home churches, but it's his church and it's one family. Mm -hmm. So in everything we do, be like Jesus. Yeah. Everything we do, be like Jesus. Knowing that you're becoming more like Jesus. Knowing that your father, God's hands and feet extended. Knowing that his children need to learn from you and they're actually in the middle of watching you. Amen. Mm -hmm. So in Colossians, right, to keep moving with that thought, Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. We are just not equipped to do things by ourselves. Yeah. If you think you are, please, I don't know if there's anyone next to you. If there is someone next to you, ask them to slap you. You are not equipped to do things. We're just not equipped that way. We work better. He sent them out two by two. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a reason for that. There's a reason that children excel where there's others around them. Yeah. There's a children when there's there's a reason, not a children. There's a reason that when we're in extended isolation, we feel lonely and yeah. depressed and anxious. Yeah. I mean, yeah, praise God that we actually <laughs> get to do life together because there is so much joy in actually going on the journey yeah. with other people, Come isn't on. there? I mean, I just, I love being with people. I love spending time with people. I love that, you, you know, that they share, that you share, that, you, you know, you get to share your Come heart. I, I love that. I love being in community. I love walking together. I would never want to do it on my own. You know, when, when God calls us to do it together, it's because because he actually knows that that's what's best for us. Absolutely. It's not like he's like, you need to do this together. It's like, I want to bless you. I want to see you flourish. I want to see you experience great joy. I want you to walk in everything I have for you. And in doing that, it's with other people. So <laughs> if you've been walking on your own, I really encourage you this week to reach out to someone. Reach out. Go for a coffee. Go for a walk. Go for a, go for a meal. Like yeah. do something to actually reach out and experience the joy of doing the journey together. And in fact, if you're walking alone because you've been offended, you've been offended by a brother or sister, you've been offended by a pastor, by a church, on their behalf, we apologize. Mm. That was never their intent. Yeah. I'm believing that was never their intent. Yeah. yeah. There are times where we're challenged in our faith, but not so that we can offend one another. Yeah. Everything in God's plan is family. Mm. It's for us to walk together. It's important to him. And sometimes we don't see or understand that importance, but he knows. In the same way that yeah. our own children don't always understand the rules, regulations, the boundaries we give them. They don't see the benefit in it until they're older. Sometimes we don't see the benefit in God, what God places his importance on. And he places importance on family, on yeah. us being childlike. Really good. First Timothy 4.16 says, Keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching yeah how you live and on your teaching stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you yeah 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 we learn from each other it, whether you want to agree with that or not this is telling us that those that hear us yeah learn from us because we need to watch how we live and how we teach because it's for our own salvation but also for theirs yeah. how can it be for theirs as well because they're watching they're listening they're learning mm -hmm. they're gleaming from us the same way that we do from those that are around us yeah, amen absolutely yeah, if we could understand the influence that we have on others as a child of God mm -hmm. then we would realize that it's so important to continue to walk in the footsteps of our Jesus, yeah. to continue to listen to his words, to continue to watch his example, mm -hmm. yeah, to be like him and to allow Holy Spirit to mold us and to shape us more and more into the image of Jesus with ever increasing glory. It's great. You know? Something... Um that I have always tried to do when I'm when I'm spending time with people of faith and especially people that are bigger in faith than me or have been walking the journey a longer time and yeah. I really admire just the intimacy and the relationship that they have with God and, and how they live their life. I love to ask a lot of questions because there's so much that we can glean from other people. Come there's on. so much that we can grab from them. You know, we don't always have to learn by our mistakes. Sometimes we can learn by spending time with people that are bigger and greater and have a lot to deposit into our lives so 
Don't think asking questions is a sign of weakness. If anything, it's a sign of strength because you're wanting to grow, you're wanting to receive. So ask lots of, ask lots of questions, you know, learn. Yeah, absolutely. Allow them to impart some of the things that God has taught them so you can receive that too. Look, there, there is so much to this train of thought, to this teaching that we don't have time for. But as a child, a child can't fight for itself. It cannot. Children cannot fight for themselves. Mm. There's this wonderful line for those that have watched the original Wonder Woman movie. When I say the original, the most recent one, where she comes out and she actually says, you know, someone questions her and she said, she, you know, they don't want her to go into a battle and she just says, I'm willing to go and fight for those who cannot fight for themselves. Yeah, come on. So as children of God moving into maturity, though we remain childlike, let's fight for those that cannot fight for themselves. Yeah. Let's watch how we speak. Let's watch how we act. Let's allow them to learn and to grow in relationship and in family with one another. Amen. Mm, amen. We need, we want to pray we want to pray for our family our church we want to pray that we would grab hold of this reality and truth yeah we are never too mature to learn from someone else mm. and the minute you get to that place you've gone somewhere in the wrong totally in the wrong direction so let's pray together amen that you and i will learn will be molded will grow will mature but in it all essence character we will still be as jesus calls us to be childlike Right. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this thank time you, together. Lord. We thank you, God, for the truth and revelation that, Lord, we were never meant to do this alone. We yes. thank you, Father, that you were never alone. Jesus, yes. you were never alone. Yes. Holy Spirit, you were never alone. You always had the Trinity. You yes. always were together. Yes. And I thank you, God, what a wonderful and beautiful example mm. of discipleship yes. and of family. Yes. And I thank you, God, that you desire that and you've purposed that for us all. And God, as we continue yes. to move in our own faith, help us to grab hold of the revelation that we will always be childlike. Amen. But Father, help us and give us the strength to put off childish things. Yes. Lord, that we may mature, that we may, may see those around us come to the truth of the gospel in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We love you, family. Have a fantastic week in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Tap me on the arm because I think something's wrong. No, I was just reminding you. No, that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs>